This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All righty. We promised you, my man, O.J. McDuffie would be kind enough to join us. There he is, cruising. Cruising. What's up, Juice? How you doing, baby? Big O, man. What's going on, man? It's been too long, brother. It's good. It's good to have you on, my man. It's uh, where where are you headed to right now? I am. I have a toy drive today, so I'm like running around getting stuff, uh, t-shirts, um, plaques, you know, things for the toy drive tonight that we do for my foundation, the Catch One Foundation. I like it. I like it. Good stuff as always, Juice. Appreciate you taking some time, Juice. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit because I've been using your name the last couple of weeks. Because I, I don't think we brag enough about this, Juice. Um, Jalen Waddle is a rookie. I want to mention that again. He's a rookie, okay? And the Dolphins are counting on him to constantly catch the ball, constantly move the chains, constantly make plays. And because he's so stinking reliable, right? Because he's the guy that lines up. Him and Gesicki line up every week. All the other receivers, we have no idea, although I still scratch my head why we don't play Matt Collins more. That's a, <laughs> whole, that, yeah. that, that's a whole different conversation because I'm about playmakers, bro, and that's all that kid does is make plays every time he's on the field. But Jalen Waddle reminds me of you, dude, a young juice, tough, catches everything in sight. You know it's coming to him. That's the other thing, juice. I don't think people t- talk enough about this. You know the ball the ball's going to 17 and you still can't stop it. Talk yeah. to me a little bit about the responsibility that this young man is carrying, his actions on the field at his age, at this stage of his career, how this offense relies heavily on this kid. That this is enormous that I don't think we talk enough about it. Oh, I agree. I, I totally agree. You know, it's so amazing though. Big O that, you know, these kids nowadays, they're so more, in my opinion, pro-ready than I think a lot of us were, especially when you're coming from Alabama with Nick Saban. You know, he's got those guys. I mean, they, they, come out of, they come out of graduation or whatever it is, draft day, and they're ready to go for the most part. But Jalen Waddle, he is that guy, man. Only thing I would disagree with you about comparing him to me is he's way faster, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, he he's got he's got yes, he's got the fifth gear. I get it. You you are a four gear guy. He, he's a fifth right. gear guy. Although although, give yourself a little credit when you were young and spry and you were returning kicks, you were a little faster yourself too. You know what I mean? Run but scared. My, Run but scared, yeah, Run yeah, you you ain't. There, there's nothing about you scared, dog. Okay, <laughs> there's nothing about you scared. No, but where I compare him is the toughness, the catching, the moving, the chains. The, the reliability, you know, I, I was a little frustrated with him in preseason and training camp. I saw the ball landing on the ground a little yeah. too much, yeah. you know, and he yeah. did have a drop yesterday, but he kind of eliminated that throughout the whole year now. And he's been really solid. That's where I compare him to you, dude. I compare him in the toughness, the reliability, the consistency. And for being a rookie, he plays like a five-year veteran, man. He really does, man. But you can see a lot of the rookie stuff at the beginning. For me, let me start. Let me start here, though, Big O. I'm a huge Waddle fan. He's a guy I wanted out of the draft, and okay. I, I kept saying that from the beginning. We would not know about Smith or Jamar Chase or anybody if Waddle didn't get hurt. You know, the beginning of his last of his last year at Alabama, he he was that dude, man. You know what I mean? So the fact that he was able to you know suck it up at the end and be able to go out there and play after that surgery, you know, towards the end of, of his last year. I mean, that dude right there has always been my guy. So I just love the fact that we actually end up getting him and not reaching and trying to get somebody else. Now, the other guys are great, too. Pitts is great. Obviously, Jamar Chase is going to be amazing. And Smith is good. But Waddle is that guy you saw that did it all, what you talked about. Toughness, return kicks, runs great routes, the speed. Every, everything about him, man, is what you want in a player. And for a young guy that's dealing with what he's dealing with, now, there's a lot of things he's dealing with probably locker room-wise and even receiver room-wise, that could be infected by some negativity. But he's been solid for us, man. And they do count on him a lot 
Because I definitely love the relationship that he and Tua have with each other. And that, that's huge right there. You can tell they have a rapport that they had in college. They started to develop it again here. And, uh, yeah, they count on him to do a lot of things. At the beginning, you know, it looks like he was having trouble getting lined up because they had him all over the place. Now he finally gets it, man. You know, he realizes that the most important thing for him is to be able to go in there and, you know, learn every single position, which is what I did, be able to line up everywhere, be able to go in motion anywhere and make it a a, a matchup nightmare for other teams. And that's what he's been doing so far. Juice, can you do me a favor and uh, let's go into a little football 101. And, you know, we got way too many idiots out there. Uh, well, not enough deep ball from Waddle, not enough deep ball from Tua. <laughs> Can you explain to him what a running game and maybe an offensive line that can hold for 2.8 seconds would do for Waddle downfield? I mean, uh, some people want to put the cart before the horse, and Waddle's doing what they need him to do right now because that's what their offense is, dude. He can, We don't have a quarterback right now that can sit, take a seven-step drop and wait three seconds for something to develop 45 yards downfield. There isn't that time right now. C can you explain to people why the the, the, the the offense has to be a little bit more limited, please? And it's not Absolutely. the players? It, exactly ah. right. It's 1,000%. It's it starts up front. Because, you know, it's, it's a cliche, but it all starts up front in the trenches, man. And so you have to do what we do best and do what we can do well, which is a quick game. You know, we still try to pound the run or force the run at times, but, but you have to to try to keep people in balance. But we are a quick game team. And, you know, and that plays into two of strengths. It plays into what Waddle's in. But now there's going to be times when we have that protection like you're talking about where we can do a double move. We have no – we only have double move opportunities right now. Right. You know, because it's so limited in terms of protection. So you see sometimes, like a couple times yesterday, I thought two would threw the ball a little early. But, hell, if you get hit in the mouth sometimes, you might have to throw it early sometimes. You know, I mean, maybe that's where the play's designed to throw it right now. Hey, Kasiki in this minus one yard route, I've never heard of, but, you know, that's what they, they do sometimes. But at the same time, though, you're right, man. It's like this, this is where our offense is built right now until we can figure out a way to protect and run the football. So short and quick, short and sweet, that's like run game. You know, it's like those are extended passes to me. So right. that's what we're going to have Waddle do. And hopefully at times these guys can you know, break some tackles, you know, get them a few extra yards. But don't worry about the yardage that people are talking about. They're worried about the deep ball. Man, Fantasy, bro. This is exactly where right. That's, that's this is where all fantasy care about, has polluted <laughs> our freaking game, bro. They can't compartmentalize reality from fantasy, OJ. No. That's, the, that's the freaking problem, dude. Tell him to get in the PPR league then, bro. You know what I mean? Because yeah, he'll, he'll exactly. get you eight catches. Yeah, you'll see your yeah, point. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Somebody asked me, do I start Waddle or Parker? I said, dude, you got to go Waddle, of course. Are you no kidding me? What? Especially <laughs> PPR. Come on, man. Parker's going to make a couple big plays, but Waddle's going to make all kinds of plays, and he's going to catch. But here's the other thing, Juice. Again, people don't understand the game, right? So now we got idiots, right? Even including Logan Ryan, which, by the way, they made a great. You saw that video they made of Logan Boy, Ryan. Outstanding, outstanding. That was awesome. Two yard pass. And meanwhile, they're burning him twenty yards downfield and for touchdowns. <laughs> and everything. It was just great. So, but we got idiots like Logan Ryan that then a reporter repeats it, and then and then and then fans repeat it. Oh, oh, two is throwing short passes. What people don't realize, Juice, is that since Marino left, maybe Pennington was the only guy. They don't have a guy. It's so dangerous to have 12 and 14 yard uh, um, uh, plays, uh, drives of 14, because you have to be yes. so perfect. Yes. But what people don't realize is the Dolphins, for the first time since I say a little bit since Pennington and obviously Marino, they have the guy that can actually pick your ass apart. They don't understand how difficult it is to be that precise on a consistent basis this yeah. is the part that they lose in all of this yeah and that's what uh and that's what we, we knew about two coming out it's his accuracy you know and getting the ball out on time we see some great quarterbacks in the past and i'm certainly not comparing to anybody that's been you know great so far so you know he just played his first full season really in the nfl uh when it comes to games and uh his accuracy, get the ball out on time, hitting guys in certain spots. I mean, some throws yesterday were just absolutely amazing. A couple sideline throws to Parker were incredible. The, the throw to Kasiki was incredible. I mean, he's that's what he does, man. He's going to pick people apart. And it's just going to get better. It's not going to get worse, Big O. It's going to get better. You know, and give him a little more protection. It's going to get better. So 
I, I love that, you know. And let me let's be let's be clear here, you know. At the beginning, when we first got to it, I was I was on the probably on the Herbert train more than anybody at one point. But you know, I oh, saw what you did. You got nervous knees. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you this, man. I am I'm happy with our selection, and I love the leadership. You know, they had they had last week off. Monday they had off. Coach, you know, said you know, you know, we'll see you on Wednesday. But hell no, two was out there leading the team on Monday, running around the field, you know, doing jog, jogging around the lap. This dude is a leader, bro. And that's what you want in that position more than anything, a guy that can go in there and lead, you know, takes the blame when it's not his fault. You know what I mean? Doesn't take as much, you know, doesn't take as much of the, of the uh, credit as he probably deserves at times. Ne I mean, never on, points man. fingers, which early never in the season, he could have pointed the fingers at a lot of crap around him. And Bro. never remember that Durham, the Durham spiked interception at the goal line. Yeah. I thought two or two handled that very well. I thought that whole thing was on Durham. You know what I mean? I thought the whole thing was on Durham, but that two didn't do that. You know, he didn't throw him under the bus, man. And that's that's what you expect from your leaders, man. So bottom line is you got a guy that's efficient, he's smart with the football, smart with the offense. Doesn't make he's made some mistakes because he's young, still in the game, but who hasn't made Most him as a quarterback? You yeah, know what right. I mean? So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about working lead and how we can get better around him now, you know. I, I and mean, then you know this, too. You know this, too, Big O, is that post Deshaun Watson talk and trade deadline, he's, he's become an even better quarterback, you yes. know. Yes. So I'm, I'm excited yes. about what the future holds for this kid. And, by the way, again, uh, um, another thing that shows you he's elite, he, he's able to compartmentalize all this crap. And there was a lot of a lot of crap around him, dude, whether it's fans, whether it's media, national media, Deshaun Watson trade rumors, all this kind of stuff. And and yet the kid handled it like the ultimate pro, because I got to tell you, OJ, I know he's a much better human being than I am because I might have lost my <laughs> mind. You know, the hot headed Cuban I am, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I would have lost you know, hey, I had a sales guy that became the program director at QAM come tell me, well, no, we're going to move you tonight. And I was like, huh? Get the F out of here, bro. I'm out of here. Get out of here. You know, I, I I, didn't take that very well either. So, you know, I'm not I'm not one of those guys that, that kind of takes that kind of stuff. So I commend him, bro, because he has risen above a lot of BS that was going on throughout. And I got to say that people in the organization – including Flo, could have come out stronger in support, and that was never there. They allowed that whole Watson story to fester, and that kid fought through it. I mean, that you you know, OJ, how many guys would fold under that kind of attention and that kind of controversy? A ton of players would fold in those situations. I think we're, yeah, I think we're talking about, you know, um, the, I think we're still on accuracy for the most part. Yeah, yeah, and the and that, 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 like like Brady and Breeze and these yeah. kind of guys yeah. dinked and dunked you and then hit you over the top. You know Absolutely, what I mean? It's, man. It's, it, it's it's one of those deals where it's like, yeah, it, it. There's nothing wrong with the way they're quarterbacking right now. You know what I love, OJ. Another thing I love about this kid is he's playing in a chaotic situation right now because he doesn't have a running game and his O line yeah. isn't doing a great job, and it's been like that all year. But his play has gotten better because, you know, one of the things I explained over the last couple months here, because people don't understand this, Fitzpatrick can play in this environment because this is all he played in his entire career. He's been a backup. He comes in the worst situations. He comes when teams are losing, when coaches are getting fired. There's chaos and turmoil. So when he came over here, he can play under those conditions. But if you throw a a freaking rookie in the situation with no off season, which he didn't have two years ago, it's going to be hard for him to adjust. And yet still he had a winning record. He threw more touchdowns right. than interceptions. Now you watch him this year and it's not like the offensive line is leaps and bounds any better or the running game or anything like that. But the kid is so smart. He has yeah. learned and adjusted to play in a chaotic situation just like Fitz has had to do it his whole life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And, and you know what? We don't even talk about how tough this kid is, man. You know what I mean? The, the ribs, yeah. you know, the, the, the hand, the finger. 
I mean, we got guys. I, I know some guys that'll sit out for hell eight, nine games with broken ribs. You know, broken ribs is one of the worst things you can ever deal with at any position, nonetheless a quarterback where they're exposed more than anybody's are, you know? And yep. so yeah, I'm with you, man. I think but I, I'm gonna ask you this question, Big O. Is Tua who is this a Tua that we, we should expect the rest of his Tua career or do you think it's gonna open up more because we're we're protected? But I think this is this is right up his alley the way he plays the game. I yeah, think this yeah. plays right into his hands the way way he does things, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we see this and it gets better because once you give them more reliable receivers around, you know, because Gesicki and Waddle and, and Matt Collins, who they never play, are the guys that he can rely on. Get him another stud receiver opposite of Waddle that he can rely on. Get him a line that can actually block because I'm sick of watching yep. Mac Jones and, and wow. Justin Herbert drop back. And I can lay a bed. I can lay a bed between the line and the quarterback and have sex with my wife there while while he's you know. And by the way, that would be a good idea on my part because she's looking at Justin Herbert while banging me. I might get really good acting. All right. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But anyway, you're keeping it one hundred. You're keeping it one hundred right there. I get it. I get it. So, uh, yeah, so. exactly. I, I'm just sick of watching these guys sit back there and they can smoke a damn cigar and have a two inch ash. And our guy handing off the ball is getting already pressured. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, yeah. it, it's the yeah. weirdest yeah. thing. And that's what I'm proud of that he has adjusted to the chaos. That tells you how yeah, smart I he think is. You were talking about, I think you were talking O line talk before that, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. O line coach. You know what I mean? And how that situation yeah. right there in itself yeah. is, a, is a situation. You know, we, we've invested so much in draft picks and a couple of free agents in that, in that line, man. And, just can't figure it out. And you know this too, well. I mean, you know football just as well as anybody, bro. It's, o, o line has had to be great. They have to be good to be able to work together. Right. You right. know what I mean? Right. That's all right. you ask. That's all you ask yeah. O line. You know, yeah. and you'll be a successful football team. Bottom line. Yeah, and you know, and this is why I got pissed that the people want to fire Greer because I think Greer, Marvin Allen, and Reggie McKenzie. I think we have one of the best front offices in the NFL. Now everybody's backtracking on that shit. Because I've been telling everybody, look at the defensive players. They're all developing. Noah doesn't develop because he can't play because there's two guys in front of him. On offense, Jalen is developing. Jalen Waddle's developing. Gesicki has developed. And Tua's balling. The only thing that's not developing is Hunter because he's got 47 tight ends in front of him. And the the O-line. But here's the thing. If Chris Greer and company have hit on most of their defensive players, they're hitting on the offensive skill players, you're going to tell me they missed out on all five linemen? Get the hell out of here. Two or three of those guys are good. And that's where my criticism is, OJ. They don't have a good O-line coach. We need to get a good O-line coach in here so we can find out which one of these guys can play and can't. You sound like me so much with that, man. When it boils down to it, man, you got guys that were hella O linemen in college at major colleges, and they can't play O line at this level. It's not about that. It's about O line coaching a lot of times, man. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know, what are they teaching some of these guys? What are they prepping for? I saw, I don't know, I saw Austin Jackson yesterday. You know, miss a like a little twist, a, a basic twist. You know what I mean? And two got hit in the mouth. You know, so it's a lot of times it does come down to coaching. You know, yeah. sometimes people don't don't want to realize that part of it. But when you got guys like that that can continually, like, you know, are not making the adjustments or making plays as an O-line, it might come down to position coach. It might Listen, just come I, down to it. You know what I mean? Joe, I, I've talked to several scouts, and I and I have this uh, old grizzled uh, line coach that I talked to about a, about two weeks ago, and he told me, hey, that kid's a right tackle. And he's talking about Eichenberg. He goes, Eichenberg mm-hmm. has no business being on the left. They must have nobody they trust to play left. And that's why they're playing him there. But Eichenberg will end up at right tackle, and he'll be just fine at right tackle. He's struggling now because at left tackle, you need a more elite athlete on that side, and he's not there at that point. Well, that's what's what crazy, though, Big O. What's crazy is we got a left-handed quarterback. So yeah. that right tackle's that blind side. You know what I mean? I, I, know. I understand that, but I'm like, yeah, that's like that's, that, if that's what the guy feels, I feel it. But, man, maybe just naturally he feels better over there. But, I mean, you think about it, though. We got a left hand. This is the front side of the quarterback that he's trying to protect and he's having trouble with, you know, which is usually the easiest side for us to elude and evade and make plays. But I hope hope that's the case. 
And then we, you know, Austin Jackson was drafted as a tackle. We moved him inside. You know, we, I think Dieter's supposed to be back. I didn't see much of what we was doing, what's going on with him this week. But, man, we've got all these assets. We've got to figure out the right guy to make them work well together. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. There's no doubt that they've got to do If they do that, then all of a sudden you're going to see the quarterback play. You're going to see a lot of what you saw in Alabama is what you're going to see because he's going to finally have some time and he can work things and then figure it all out because he's going to kill you underneath and then he's going to hit you. Look, the, the other day when he threw that deep ball like three weeks ago, People don't even look at it. If you really look at it, he's kind of sideways when he's throwing. He threw 50 yards sideways with a fractured yards. finger. Yep. Stop making yep. this crap up that he can't throw deep. This is garbage. The guy can throw deep. You know, and you know what else I, I he's starting to realize, though, Big O, is that Alabama Open is different than NFL Open. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's starting to throw it, you know, in these tight windows. You know, he's used to guys running wide open, and then he was squeezing at the beginning because they weren't wide open. You're not going to get too much wide open in this league, man. And so that's why it's accuracy, like you talk about, is so important. And uh, he, he can definitely let it rip. I mean, he's not oh, going to yeah. throw like a Dan Marino 40, 50 yard laser, but he can definitely right. let it rip. You know what I mean? So that's what we I'm need to know. It. We know we got the quarterback right here, man. We, you know, and, and that's going to be a hit. I think it's gonna, he's going to be a hit, bro. I think it's going to be a hit. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. I'm just glad that the draft picks are all developing so people can calm down about firing the front office and all of that. Yeah, and by the I, way, as, as, as Javon and Brandon Jones and all these dudes, all these, them young safeties, oh, man, yeah, are they successful, right? Oh, are you my kidding me? Are you kidding goodness, me? Goodness. I'm with you all the way. And by the way, as for windows, I always explain it this way. In college, they're sliding glass doors. In, in in the NFL, they're bathroom windows. Okay. Damn right they are. You damn the right difference. they are. That one that the deep in time with the young pump deep in this one right here. You right. gotta you gotta fire through that door, right? Right. It's, right it's, it's those little windows that none of us fit through. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's that's that Nobody window that you got in the NFL. The bathroom window, do they? Big L. Nobody breaks in the house through the bathroom window, do they? Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, uh, unless it's uh, unless it's a midget robber or something, you know that's that's the only way you're getting in, bro. Outside of that, most of us aren't going to be able to work with that bathroom window. But that's that bathroom window is what two us work. That bathroom window was the throw to Gesicki yesterday. That's the Boy, bathroom was window. Boy, huh? was Boy was it? Yeah, it was, buddy. That was so well, nice, man. So yeah. nice, man. And that's what that's what's going to change with his game. And he's going to get better and better, man, at that anticipation, you know, throwing it that tight window. You got a DB with his back to you, man. Throw the ball. If he's got his back to you, don't worry about it. You know, you got a guy, your wide receiver you trust. The, the, you talk about a little bit about about Devontae. You know, Devontae had five catches, all first downs. Three of them, I think, were on third down. And some of those mm -hmm. balls to the sideline, they were back to the shoulder. They were sick. I mean, oh, that, 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 sec right that there, second man. one was a great catch by Devontae and the feet. But the mm -hmm. anticipatory throw from Tua to know where he, where the player was going to be and where the DB wasn't, those are the things you can't teach that, OJ. It's right. either the quarterback right. has it or he doesn't when it comes to that. That's something you don't teach, those anticipatory throws. 1,000%, man. And, uh, now, he's going to have some more growing pains because he's still growing. You know, we're gonna, we're, he's going to have some tough ones down the road. You know what I mean? But, uh, shoot, man, I think we're on the right path with this cat, man. You know, and I think, you know, everybody needs to start understanding we've got a quarterback for the future, you know. And, and, and you know, one thing that's not going to change with Tua is his mind. You know what I mean? And so yeah. that's the one thing that usually if you can't, you can't make somebody a smart quarterback a lot of times. They might have the physical attributes and talent. But when you got a guy that's that smart, he's going to be smart with the football and he still has the accuracy. And you can win forever like that. Yeah, I heard they pulled permits for massage parlors around the stadium now that two is playing well. <laughs> All right. Uh, follow, follow him on Twitter, by the way, at OJ You're McDuffie. Mess. You're a mess, Rico. You're a mess. <laughs> follow, follow him on Twitter at OJ McDuffie 81. He is the legend, baby. He is Juice. Juice, thank you for taking some time. You're the best, my brother. I appreciate hey, sorry you. About the, sorry about all the problems today, man. Great talking to you, brother. Nothing but love. Nothing but love. Thank you, Juice. You'll be good. Hey, there you go. <laughs>